streets on the water. Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. Welcome to the season finale of season two of Top Earner. This is episode four in season two. And I'm going to get straight to it here. Leroy is uh, going through a lot, right? Because now Big Al is in jail and his name is ringing in the streets because he had gotten out apologized to everybody for the things that he had done. But as soon as he found out what had happened to him, you know what I'm saying, by way of Big Al messing with Crystal, he abandoned all of the things that he said he had come to believe in and the way he wanted to live his life in the pursuit of revenge. He wanted to get his lick back in the way that he wanted. So he aligned himself once again with Big Al just to be able to take him down. He made a deal with the, the district attorney in exchange for immunity to take Big Al down. And he was able to achieve that, giving them the location of his drug spots and how he was laundering his money and all of these types of things he had done with Big Al. And now Big Al was in a pickle. He was locked up, pinned in trial with charges after Yin Yang and more charges coming and had no way of getting out of it unless... Unless he got rid of Leroy. So at first he just wanted to apply the pressure. And he would send people by, messing with Leroy, you know what I'm saying, Sc trying to scam up, but it didn't work. So Big Al knew he had to up it. He had to increase the pressure. So now he's trying to pay somebody to really do something to Leroy. Hurt him. But see, the game, I'm going to tell y'all something. I've been in penitentiary a long, long time. And I've heard a lot of dudes in here talk about what they're going to do to this person and that person is going to testify against them on the streets and all this and that and how they're going to call their homeboys and their homeboys are going to put in work and they're going to take care of the business. And nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, nine and a half times, nine and three quarters out of ten, Nothing happens. Nothing happens. They sit on the phone and they talk about this and that and they talk about how much money they're willing to give somebody. And in a lot of situations, they do give them the money. And then nothing happens. And that's what happened to Big Al on multiple occasions. All of these people that he fed, all of these people in the streets that were, he was making sure that they had money in their pockets and, and, and drugs to sell, all of them had one thing in common. They had learned that the game is about manipulation and deceit. That's what they learned. And they partly learned that from Big Al. So when Big Al called them and asked them to put their freedom in jeopardy for him, for money, in exchange for money, yeah, they said yes. That was the manipulation. That was the manipulation. Yeah, tell him whatever he wanted to hear. And then when they got the money, boom, there it is. They deceived him all the way. They didn't do anything. So now, over time, Big Al is starting to get desperate. And he's aligning himself with individuals that are in the penitentiary that he knew before they came to the penitentiary. People that he hasn't done anything for while they've been in prison. But now, all of a sudden, they're his best friends. They're hanging out every day. They're doing all this and that together. And he asked them, do you have anybody on the town that can take care of this for me? And if you do this, I'll make sure that I give you X amount of dollars. And again, they said yes. It's very few situations. Listen to me, y'all. This game is not what you think it is. Real talk. How many people do you know? Let's keep this one undone. How many people do you know that have gone through what Big Al is going through and tried to alleviate the problem by getting somebody on the streets to sacrifice their freedom so that he could get out by doing something to the person that's going to testify against him? How many people do you know that have actually gone through with that? 
Yeah, they might talk bad about him in the streets, call the, the person on the streets a snitch, a rat, and all these different types of things, but they ain't really done nothing to him. They ain't done nothing to him. They ain't done nothing to him. They look at it like Big Al on his own. That's part of the game. Deceit, manipulation, using each other. And that's what happened. They sucked him dry. They, as much money as they could get out of him, they did. But then he started to think, I got to pay my lawyer. I'm still tricking, you know what I'm saying, paying the bill to the females that are you really paying to come visit you. You're doing all of these types of things. And not to mention some of the kids that he got on the town still got to take care of them. So he didn't, when money's not coming in, money's drying up. That's just how the game goes. Now, Leroy is, is, is looking at the situation and he understands that he may face some ridicule, that he may face, you know, whenever he would go to the store or somewhere out in public that people might whisper about him. People might talk about him. But Leroy didn't care nothing about that. Why? Because Leroy was free. Leroy was free. And a person that he had grown to despise was gone. Now, here's the problem with that for Leroy. Because of what he be believed, what he had come to believe anyway, the right thing for him to do, come on now, let me tell y'all something. The right thing for him to do was to forgive Big Al and Crystal. He had forgiven Crystal. But he was having a hard time forgiving Big Al. He was having a real hard time doing that. And that was partly because he was having a hard time forgiving himself. That's the problem. If not for the decisions that he made, it's a real, real high possibility, probability, we're talking math, that this never happens. He chose to get into the dope game to pay his bills. And once he got in that and he finally told Crystal about it, Crystal finds herself being compromised by all the things that came with it. She liked it. She liked it. And it changed the dynamic of their relationship. And it opened the door to her doing things that she never imagined that she would do. So the shame and the guilt that Leroy was feeling was blocking him from being able to fully comprehend and understand that forgiving himself is the only way to move beyond that. And in part, in forgiving himself, he has to forgive Big Al. See, that's why a lot of people don't want to forgive. They don't know how to let the shame of what they've done and the decisions they've done. First of all, they don't want to take responsibility. Let me correct that. First of all, we don't want to take responsibility, full responsibility for the things that happen in our lives because of the decisions that we make and the domino effect that comes with it. We don't really fully understand that. Now, we'll talk it away, but our behavior don't speak to the forgiveness aspect for ourselves. And when we block the forgiveness aspects of it for ourselves, we most assuredly can't give it to somebody else. But we talk the talk and walk the walk, but the, the behavior stays the same. The behavior stays the same. So now, Leroy, he's starting to understand, wait a minute, this is bigger than Big Al. This is bigger than Crystal. This is about my relationship with the Most High. And it's starting to bother him because he's not doing the right thing. Now, the time comes for him to go to trial and testify on behalf of the state because Big Al is not taking a plea. He's going to fight this thing. He's trying to get out of prison. He's in a state of mind where, you know, <laughs> he's not really understanding what's going on. He don't want to face the reality of the decisions that he's made. He don't want to face that. He wants to fool himself like a lot of people do into thinking that I can get out of this by doing this or I can get out of this by doing that. None of that works in the courtroom. The stuff that you tell your people on the phone and, and all these old tricks of the trade, and none of that stuff works. None of that stuff works. Trying to get people to come up in the courtroom and say this and say that for you. Nah, they might agree to it, but when they raise their hand and put their hand on their Bible, 
They get nervous. Then if they slip up and the DA says, wait a minute now, he said, I'm going to give you an opportunity to clean that up on based on the penalty of perjury. And then he'll explain what perjury is to them. And then they'll get to thinking, they don't want to do no five years in prison for telling a lie for somebody that really don't care nothing about them. And then they'll tell the truth, and then that makes the situation worse. And that's what happened to Big Al. He had two or three people coming up in there saying that, you know, Leroy was in charge of everything. Police not stupid. They knew Big Al was in charge, and they knew exactly when Leroy started dealing with him. They knew all of these things. Plus, let's keep in mind, Big Al had worked for them too. He had worked for them too. But here's the thing. They didn't need him no more. They didn't need him no more. They win all the way around the board. They got Leroy that don't want to have nothing to do with the game, willing to testify against Big Al, who has been running the streets for years, spreading his poison throughout the community. They win. They get two people off the streets from selling drugs, one voluntarily, the one involuntarily. It's over with. They'll deal with the next drug dealer that thinks that they can take his spot later. But right now, they don't need Big Al no more. That's the game. That's the game. So Leroy gets up on the stand and he testifies to all the things that he promised the DA that he would testify to. And he lays out the whole scheme, how they went into other neighborhoods and, and, and set up shop and they had these houses and all these different places. They were selling all these drugs. He even explained the books to them, how much money they were making and how much money he was making and all of these different types of things, right? But while he's sitting on this stand, his guilt is eating him up eating him up because he knows he's taking money and put to the side for his future. You understand? He knows that he hasn't forgiven himself and he needs to forgive Big Al, but he has to fulfill his obligation to the DA at the same time. What do you do? What do you do? And the DA asked him as if the DA was a mind reader. He said, how do you feel about what you're doing today? He said, I don't feel good about it. He told him, I don't feel good about this at all. He said, I was selling drugs and poison to the people in my community and in the surrounding communities. And I was doing it with him. And I made a lot of money. He said, but when I went to prison, I saw the, the result of what I was doing. And then when I got out, I learned that the person that I was doing business with was having sex with my fiance. And he said, it made me angry. So when the DA sat down, Big Al's lawyer gets up and he asked him, he says, so you're doing this for revenge? And Leroy knows exactly where he's going, but he tells him, he said, partly, yes. He says, so if you're doing it for revenge, how can we believe that you're telling us the truth? And Leroy tells him, he said, I'm telling the truth because it is the truth. He said, you read the books yourself. He said, but we have testimony that you're the one that was in charge. So the DA stands up. He says, I object, Your Honor. The evidence that has been submitted shows that uh, Leroy is not the kingpin, but Big Al is. The judge agrees with him and tells the defense attorney to move on. And he tells the jury to disregard that. So Big Al's lawyer keeps talking to Leroy, trying to pigeonhole him and to get him to say something to slip up. But there's nothing to say. The truth is what it is. And he's laid it all out. And the story that he gave the jury was a compelling one. He laid out exactly why he was doing what he was doing, exactly what he had learned when he had went to prison. And it was having an effect on him that... He couldn't ignore. And when he told the jury that he didn't feel good about what he was doing, they understood that. They understood that. And they understood that, you know, him doing this because Big Al slept with his wife, they all could relate to that. They all could relate to that. And they bought everything that he said. They believed every word that he said. And within two hours, they came back with a unanimous decision and found Big Al guilty on all charges, all charges. And then he was subsequently sentenced a couple of days later to 45 years 
at 100% because of the way they stack the charges in the penitentiary. In the penitentiary. Now, Leroy had immunity on all of those charges. But let me show you how the state works. You remember Leroy got out on appeal. And the state had agreed to, right now, take some time and decide what they were going to do because they were not going to be able to use the same witness that they had used before because of the Brady violations and all the different things like that, right? But guess what? They had another person that was willing to testify. You want to know who that is? Big Al. Big Al, through his lawyer, had gotten in touch with the state's attorney general. State's attorney general is over all the DAs in the state, right? And told the state's attorney general, because that's who was handling the appeal of Leroy's, right? They deal with all that kind of stuff. And told them that he'd be willing to testify about all the things that were going on with Leroy when he caught that case about the boy being and, and dying. So now, the shoe's on the other foot. The shoe is on the other foot. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about how things work. When Leroy was presented with the situation of having to go back to trial, they re-indicted him. They arrested him. They let him make bond to wait because he has shown that he'll cooperate. Now keep in mind, this case is still in the same city. So now the attorney general and the DA in this city, they're sitting down and they're talking. And they're thinking about what it is that they're about to do. Yeah, they're going to get a conviction on this charge. But, and Big Al thinks that this is the way he's going to get his revenge because he's going to be willing to testify against Leroy. And then Leroy's going to end up in prison. And then he said he's going to make sure that he gets Leroy back for what he's done. But the attorney general and the DA, they're getting together and they're talking and they're trying to figure out what it is they want to do. They're going to, find, they're going to take it to trial if Leroy don't take this plea. But guess what? They offered him a plea. They offered him a plea because he had already done three years in prison. They offered him a plea of eight years if he pleads guilty, right? They'll give him credit for the three years, right? Now, the sentence is at 85%. And they said that if he pleads guilty, he'll do three years in the county jail. Three years on the eight, right? Plus the three is already served. That'll give him six. And then they won't oppose him getting out at that time. Now, here's the thing. Leroy's not stupid. He took the plea. And that keeps him from having to go back to prison. He's talked it over with Crystal. Crystal has agreed. She's waiting and she's going to wait faithfully this time. So Leroy goes to the county jail. He's doing his time. And in the county jail, you get more good days than you get in the penitentiary. In some, in some situations, you get two, three, four for one. That means four days of good time for every one day that you do. So them three years, they went by like that. They went by like that because of the good time. And the whole time, Big Al is sitting in prison with these 40 some years with rocks in his jaws. Leroy is sitting in the county jail. Time is running by and he's solidifying his relationship with the Most High. And he's prayed and he's forgiven himself and now he's even forgiven Big Al. He's accepting full accountability and responsibility for what he did. He set these dominoes in motion. Big Al got to deal with his situation itself. He got to deal with his situation itself. So the day finally comes that he gets out. He gets out. And here we go. All these years later, I want to show you something real quick before we end this episode. All these years later, go back to the time that Leroy got laid off. He got let go from the factory, right? To now. All of those years and all the things that have happened and all the lessons that they've learned. Right? When he gets out, when he gets out, they are starting right at that point they were at when Leroy met Big Al at the unemployment office. Because all of that money that they had made 
he had told Crystal to give it away to charity. Give it away. He didn't want it. He didn't want not one cent of it. Not one cent of it. So when he got out of the county jail, they were back to zero. But they were happy. They were happy. And the plans to move away and do all this and do all that, he didn't move away. He couldn't afford to move away. But he didn't want to move away anymore. Crystal didn't want to move away anymore because they wanted to do the right thing by the community that they had destroyed. So he got a job in the city he's from. And plus, he works at the community rec center speaking to the kids about what he did. And a lot of the people in the town that were involved in the drugs, using and selling drugs when he was doing his thing, that no Big Al, they see Leroy as a different person now. And Big Al is still stuck on that treadmill, on that hamster wheel, back and forth with the same thing, spreading rumors in the, well, not rumors, they're fact. You know what I'm saying? Depending on how you look at it, telling everybody that Leroy ain't no good. He can't be trusted. This, this, and that. And the truth of the matter is he can't be trusted as a criminal. But he's admired as an upstanding person in the community because he's honest, truthful, and transparent. And to somebody that's in the criminal world, that ain't straight. So I want you to remember that. How do you value, how do you measure up and decide who's straight and who's not? Do you measure up somebody that's transparent, honest, and truthful as being straight or not? Or do you measure somebody that's liar, deceitful, manipulative, unforgiving, and bitter as straight or not? Which one? You get to decide that. Nobody can decide that for you. This has been the final episode in season two of Top Earner. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I hope to have more to come. But this has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. And I say peace.